Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the Large and Unnecessary First Player Token Podcast. Man, you're good at it. Thank you. I'm I'm getting very good good at this, aren't I? I'm smooth. Perfected your radio voice. (laughs) I'm I'm impressed here. (laughs) My name is Chris. I'm Ewan. I'm Pavel. And welcome to the show. We are uh, here to talk about some gaming for you in this special Christmas episode or whatever holiday you celebrate. Yule, um, Saturnalia. That's a one. Saturn, yeah, that's, that just sounds filthy. That, that, but Saturnalia was a bit filthy. Uh, let's face it. As a Roman one, it's bound uh, to be filthy. Uh, I'm going to be celebrating a weekend. You're celebrating the weekend? Yes. Yeah. Like any other weekend? No, no, it's it's just exactly the same kind, but it's more difficult to get a takeaway. That's true. Yeah, it's true. But less likely you'll get called out. Uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> people, need, people need Pavels on Christmas. Mm. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see what happens. Always on call. Even for completely different cities on the other side of the country. He I've, will go. I've he done will go. Brussels three days ago at night. <laughs> That's quite impressive, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, we're here to talk about some gaming. We're not here to talk about Pavel's work life. No, uh, so we're just going to get straight into it. This a uh, nice relaxing Christmas episode. Mm. And so let's talk about some video games, Pavel. You've been playing something which... It's got the most generic name for a Japanese thingy game. No, yes, it it is unfortunately a very, unfortunately a generic uh, name. It took me a while to memorize it, maybe because it's it's long and it's got a it's just words that you find in hundreds of other games. <laughs> it's a brilliant game. I love it, but man, I was halfway through the game and I could still not memorize that title. The game is titled uh, Shadow Tactics: The Blades of the Shogun. Desu. <laughs> Nihon. <laughs> Ni- yeah, Nihon go Desu. So there's ninjas in it, there's shogun in it, there's blades, there's shadows. Uh, you, you've there's got tactics. Mm. Yes. That's a spin off from the Metal Gear series. You've isn't got it? all ah, the right. tropes you need in a, in a proper uh, game, I suppose, title of this kind. Um, Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun is made by Mimimi Productions. So if you cannot memorize, <laughs> whoa, 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 hang on, what was that? Yeah, this is this is my point actually. If you, you not... cannot memorize the title of this game, you will definitely remember the name of the company that made it because it's it's called Mimimi. Um, He's right, yeah, it's it sounds Mimimi. like somebody's just coming in and editing you. Like we're not allowed to say the name. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Can a... you not just tell us the name, Pavel? Yeah, yeah. it's called me, me, me. Like, who's doing that? I uh, hear, yeah. Pavel. What's the name That's of this company? Really uh, the company's called me, me, me. <laughs> Is but... this the Snoopers Charter? No, no. Take before we go any further, um, uh, why do we always get political? <laughs> Devs, I mean, me, 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 people. I absolutely love you. You've made an amazing game, and you've truly made my my Christmas with it, and and most of my December. In all fairness. I've been playing it now for a good couple of weeks. Um, I've pretty much just completed it now, and without without expecting it, uh, just it pretty much became my game of the year, really. Uh, and 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 it's a nice um, it's a nice thing to get surprised by by such quality by by the sheer amount of awesomeness in a game. If you don't build up your hype nowadays. I, th- I have, a th- I, I think that nowadays you, you sort of, you know what sort of game you're looking at, uh, you, you, you're waiting for, you've seen trailers a year earlier, you you wait for something and eventually you probably get rewarded with something decent or maybe you have stuff to complain about. And it doesn't happen that often nowadays that I actually pick up a random game, random because I've just, I've not heard of it until I suddenly saw it just appear on my Steam. I clicked on it, downloaded it, started playing it, and that was my social life gone for another two weeks easily because I was just playing that. Um, Pavel, you're giving us a story of your life here. Ah. <laughs> 
What is this game? Yes, let's let's talk about the game. <laughs> what was the weather like Thank when you, you bought yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The weather when I wearing? bought it, well, I don't know actually, because it's Scotland. So uh, <laughs> my my understanding of Scottish weather is that it's either Scottish or almost Scottish, and and that's the two variations we have here. Um, hello. So Shadow Tactics: Blades <laughs> of the Shogun is. Um, an isometric, real-time, stealth, team-based, tactical action. Is that is that a well-detailed genre? Um, I think so. I mean, you just said a bunch of buzzwords there. Oh. So, <laughs> right. Um, oddly enough, uh, <laughs> there isn't many games like this around nowadays. Uh, I've actually never played a game in this particular genre before. Um, I see on the net people keep mentioning the title Commandos. Yes, not, yes. So you guys are familiar with Commandos. I'm familiar maybe? with Commandos. Yeah. I remember Commandos. Yeah, that was uh, that was a long time ago, I think. Exactly, and and probably not that much has happened in this particular field until recently, thanks to me. The C- Commandos was a brilliant game. In fact, you and I'm pretty sure you've played this. It was back in like Windows ninety five or something like that. Possibly. It was like you had a little squad of guys, I believe, and you had to uh, just kind of go behind enemy lines and go and do various things. And it was almost sort of... I don't know if it was meant to be World War Two themed or something like uh, that. But, um, but yeah, that was a great game. Right, so everybody keeps saying, uh, whenever I see comments or reviews on the net, uh, that, oh yeah, Commandus was a great game. And everybody keeps saying that this game uh, reminds them of Commandus. So well done, I've... No idea what Commando is. Thank you very much, Chris, for I a show. I think it was a British game. That might be mm. why you've never heard of it. Ah, yes, because back in those days, I was living in a Slavic land with an entirely different weather patterns <laughs> and <laughs> and games mostly ripped from either the States or Russia or, I don't know, Uzbekistan. Well, we are <laughs> 10 minutes into this review now and you haven't actually really elaborated on... The mechanics of the gameplay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for keeping me in check. We're only being. We're just. We like to. We'll be here for another sixty minutes before I get there. Um, unfortunately, so, Babel, this is, what is this game you've been this playing? This is what happens when I'm very excited about a game. Uh, right. Um, so you've got seventeenth century Japan. You're looking at it from uh, isometric point of view. You've got a team of five characters. Um, and you've got a total of 13 missions, each of them complex enough to take you in between of, usually I'm going to say about an hour to three hours if you take your time or if you're bad at it. Um, the goal of most missions is really to assassinate something because this is Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun, and Shogun wants you to kill stuff. Nihon Desu. Nihon Desu. <laughs> Shogun wants you to assassinate people. There's going to be missions less maybe focused on assassinating uh, stuff and more on other things that ninjas would normally do, like blend in the shadows and be all um, sneaky and spy on your enemies, steal stuff. Rescue missions actually happened a few times, but I don't want to spoil too much. Um, the the five characters you have are actually uh, what you would, I suppose, expect from Japanese characters in, 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 in such a scenario. So you've got your, your fairly generic uh, ninja uh, guy called... Uh, Hayato, who um, is only there for the money, uh, because that's what ninjas do. And I've actually got all the other characters here so that I don't forget anything. You get Mugen, and Mugen is your, uh, again, fairly arch- archetypal samurai, uh, who's absolutely fearsome and, and, and combat can take multiple enemies at once, and is just this undying loyalty he's got for his daimyo, oh sorry, the shogun actually in this particular case. Then you've got uh, you've got um, Aiko, who's a Kunoichi, so a female ninja. There, every every each of these five characters have got their own specialties uh, when it comes to uh, the ways of assassinating all the many 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 guards you're gonna kill in this game, um, and misdirection, uh, crowd control, or however you call it. Aiko's specialties um, 
disguise, really, because that's what Kunoichi do. Yeah, they, they put whatever uh, other clothes on themselves, whether it's a uh, uh, civilian, whatever geisha you call it, say, some sort of uh, noble woman, peasant, and just distract guards. Yeah. <laughs> They have like a bit of seaweed and it turns out to be a throwing star or something like that. Throwing stars are Hayato's specialty. He's a ninja, oh. he throws throwing stars. He's really good at it. Range is fairly crappy compared to other things, uh, to other characters, because we also have Takuma. Takuma is your, um, is your elderly sniper. And by sniping, I mean matchlock uh, gun rather than... Oh, right. uh, this is 17th century, so there's okay. matchlock weaponry in the game. Really prevalent. Most of most of the enemies don't carry swords, but rather firearms. Um, Takuma is is this this old chap that chuckles with every sentence, and he's got a pet uh, uh, raccoon, and um, he's a he's a tinkerer. Um, and to top it off, we have we have a, a street orphan girl, uh, pretty much raised by stray cats, who. Lace traps everywhere, and each of these characters has their strengths uh, and various tactical uh, usefulness in various situations. Uh, you very rarely will have all five characters at your disposal because the the missions tend to rotate them depending on what happens uh, in the in the overall scenario. Um, so you have to make do with who you have. Surely the samurai guy is going on his own because he wouldn't participate in yeah. sneaky <clears throat> assassinations. That would be dishonorable. He's not going yeah. to have to go one, one of the things about this game that really surprised me because when you get when you get a tactical <laughs> game... Was how historically inaccurate it is. <laughs> <laughs> the Shogun has, a, has put expect- together a, a, a ragtag band of Japanese stereotypes. <laughs> <to go> on- <laughs> well... It's sort of that's the premise, yeah, and you sort of expect it to be this way. But you, these these characters are actually not only, you know, likable and even relatable. Relatable, there you go. Yeah. Um, but there is plenty of chemistry in between of them because it's not just the missions. You actually get enough cutscenes to get to know them better, and and all five characters have their own character arcs as we go through the game. Yeah. Um, and you care for them, you care for the team. And more so than you expect uh, at some points during the game, you actually get f- quite surprised by how, how the story develops. Um, and what was I going to say? That Mugen, who's a samurai, and you would indeed expect him to be uh, very hon- honorable, um, becomes a sort of a, a leader of this, of this secret... Uh, force of the shogun so oh, right. even though even though he's obviously very honorable and you'd expect him to do to to face his enemies face to face because how else can you face someone if not face to face can you face back somebody right well you can try <laughs> well i suppose if you're a samurai you have to or you should what what mugen does is he's very open-minded especially for a samurai so he's he he bef- befriends the hired to dude who's the who's the ninja uh and he sort of tries to appreciate and learn his ways in order to serve his master the best okay so he starts to manage the the whole group of unlikely assassin people in order to uh, to conduct secret missions for his master um, so in his own way, he's actually very honourable and very, uh, you know, it's just honour in Japan doesn't really necessarily mean chivalry. Yeah. Uh, it's it's much more complicated. Um, hello, shall we go back to... Yes, where were we? Um, <laughs> isometric view, as I said, it's fairly important to mention that because um, this game is gorgeous. <laughs> I love the way it looks so much. <laughs> I, I fell in love with this game as soon as I saw it. Uh, honestly, this is a game for any what you call it Japano file or lots of floating yes. blossoms, yeah, like, Sakura yeah. things. F F I'm, <laughs> out of season. Uh, it's just I actually there. have a collection of PlayStation Two games solely devoted to just all things Japan, yeah. And it all started obviously from Shenmue on 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 Dreamcast, but then on PlayStation Two there was this time when when there was a shitload of horror and good horror games as well. 
and I would play them just just so that I could actually you know run around in Japanese environments uh, right. and things like this and get to interact with Japanese characters and uh, and Japanese concepts I suppose. Um, Mimimi Productions is a company based in in Germany. But this game has been done with, I don't know, historians or somebody intimately uh, knowledgeable about all things Japan and, and, and all things that particular period. It's really well done and you get to see um, all the, I'm going to say, all the classical ninja story uh, scena- scenarios and locations you would expect. So whether they're, uh, you know, castles during, during sieges or castles during peacetime. Uh, small villages with uh, with your rice paddies or bus bustling, um, uh, you know, crowded towns. You're gonna get your mountain passes and all sorts of um, places like this. And and mo- well, some I'm gonna say maybe even most missions come with additional uh, tactical. Uh, modifiers because if it's if it's night time suddenly the way your stealth works and your tactics right. uh, work will change and um, if it's snow then you're leaving you know uh, foot marks in the snow and and your guards will see oh, that obviously because it's a stealth game uh, it's all about uh, guards vision cones and how exactly to, to how exactly uh, w- it's all about, I suppose, finding uh, uh, finding out the pattern of, of the guards, uh, preparing your, your initial attacks, uh, I suppose, cutting through the uh, the guards and finding a, a breach and, and right. whatever status quo and then working your way through it. Uh, um, <clears throat> so you're trying to work out like when patrols are going around to sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, minimize the risk of... Yeah, Other but, people being alerted or whatever. You know, yeah, so. because this game penalizes you for, for an actual full alert. If somebody actually sees you kill somebody or right. if there's other reasons to raise an alarm, then guards corpses spawn from... The place. Exactly. Usually there's what? plenty of carrying corpses and, and disposing of them in this game. And even, even in this matter, characters will vary. Some mm. characters carry corpses faster. Some characters do it more stealthily. There is so much variation in what what e- each of these characters can do is better or worse at. Um, How do you like actually control your team of people then? Is it like this like a point and click thing, like Kenny kind of Commandos a, was? It's a point and click, um, and you know, select uh, characters with uh, keyboard buttons one to five. Uh, select their skills with keyboard buttons. Uh, I think it's A, S, D, yeah, yeah. F, um, and you rotate your camera with Q, W, uh, e. e, yeah. So, <laughs> how did you know, Chris? Yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not staring at a keyboard right now. <laughs> right, oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, it quickly becomes second nature, um, and and in terms of interface, it's actually very well done. So is it is it turn based then, or is it? No, it's not. It's no. real time, okay. uh, but. So, when I mean, it, it sounds really similar to Commandos, I'll be honest with you. That's, it sounds like why, almost identical that's, to it. That's why everybody um, keeps mentioning it. It yes. sounds like it might be a sure. bit more depth. I don't think there was like many skills or anything in Commandos, so it sounds like there's probably a bit more depth there. But yeah, it does sound pretty much identical to it, other than the, the theming of it, really. Because it's a stealth game, everything really resolves around not being seen yeah. and, and killing fairly fast in order to dispose of the body bec- before anybody sees it. So every... Each of these characters will have a way to kill somebody, uh, a unique way. So whether it's a shuriken, which means you can kill s- someone stealthily from a distance, whether it's a uh, mugen who can pretty much just run into and do a, an area of uh, effect uh. kill on everybody that's not armored, whether it's uh, uh, a Yuki who can lay a trap and then play a little f- flute, and whoever <laughs> hears it will uh, will come over and step on the trap and get killed. Right. Stuff like this, but um, a, if not for the skills, then the characters still differ. Even in the simple fact that your um, your stealth kill, your actual melee attack, will be faster or slower depending uh, which character you're using. Mm-hmm. So there is a lot of factors involved in your tactical planning. Um, and and the game is reasonably hard, especially at the beginning, but never too hard. Um, 
although the last mission takes you a good three or four hours, I think. Um, and at some point you, you find your own uh, preference how, how to do things, uh, characters you're more um, keen on using, and especially in easier scenarios and uh, situations. But I don't think there's there was a single skill of any characters, uh, character that I haven't used multiple times. So the game does demand you to mm. get familiar with all the characters and utilize all the characters, which, in my opinion, shows you know great planning, great uh, gameplay design. Um, there is not a single way to to do it. So each all, all these all these maps are fairly large and uh, and varied, and you can you can deci- decide how how to approach your your goal and which which route to take. Although, because I love the game, I just I, I just want to kill everybody. So even if I'm close to my um, goal, I might as well just step back and make sure that I've uh, cleared up everything because that's just the way. <laughs> you, you want to you mop know, up those excess. Uh, mopping up right. blood is what you need to do. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> Well, there was one point you said you wanted to make earlier on. You yes. said to me about the... Uh, An important thing also... Uh, sorry, go ahead. About trial and error. Trial and error, yes. <laughs> good point. Um, the game takes a good while to load initially, and you even get an actual uh, warning saying, um, uh, this game might actually appear dead for a, uh, for a bit when it's loading for the first time. Okay. Which is good. But, um, however, they've uh, they've done it uh, once the uh, level is properly loaded and you start playing the game, uh, and you do your quick saves uh, yeah. fairly often, and you misstep, misclick, somebody saw you, uh, you most of the time you don't really want to fight the guards because they're just going to keep multiplying. Yeah. You just press your F8, and, you know, two seconds later, you, you try again. Okay. Uh, so in a stealth game, I suppose that's that's fairly important. Uh, so well done in here. Um, you've asked whether it's uh, uh, turn-based, which makes sense because it's it's a team-based game. It's it's real-time strategy. So in order for you to be able to manage multiple characters quite often at the same time, you do have what's called a stealth, sorry, a shadow mode in here because it's shadow tactics. So and there you go, which is literally. Uh, uh, assigning uh, skills to a single key. Uh, it's like programming a single event, yeah? Okay. So you press your shift button, and then you select the characters and their skills as normal, but instead oh. of them executing that attack or that special skill, uh, it sort of gets saved. And I think you can load up three or four different activities in, a, in, the, in the shadow uh, thing, and once it's prepared... And you, you just you just press enter and everybody executes that at the same time. Oh. So if you need you know additional uh, firepower support from the distance from the sniper guy, and you do need this quite often because apart from regular guards, you're gonna get these especially difficult and dangerous samurai uh, enemies who are armored and you can't just assassinate them straight away. You have to incapacitate them first or stun really with with a firearm, and then. You know, a fraction second of uh, later, uh, stab them with your knife or sword. So that's what shadow mode is for. Uh, so to sum it up, <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a fantastic game uh, that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, it, it caught me by surprise. Loved it. I'd love to see a sequel. Please make a sequel. Me me me. And um, <laughs> that's those sensors again. I know. And uh, I loved it so much that you know I just I I actually wanted and have bought a special edition <laughs> collector's edition, uh, even though it was only released in Germany. So I don't even speak German, but I wanted an art book, so I got it. It's lovely. I wanted a soundtrack. I got it. I've got all sorts of other freebies with it. Well, that's that's the, the kind of guy you are. <laughs> I've got a sp- uh, copy of the <laughs> game in German if anybody wants it. <laughs> all right. Um, because yeah, just just. Needed it. So, so Pavel is Mr. Shadow Tactics. You needed a German version of this game, did you just say? I needed a, a collector's edition of the game, but yeah, it works. <laughs> it's just, that was a weird statement. <laughs> <clears throat> right, um, so that's um, Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun, um, by... Me, me, me. 
Productions and uh, Daedalic Entertainment published it. Now that's uh, at the moment only on Microsoft Windows, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's released on Steam. You possibly can, Mac yeah. OS, um, but it's coming out on PlayStation Four and Xbox One mm. next year. Mm. Um, date still to be announced. And it's it's gorgeous. It's emotional. It's really well done. <laughs> How much does that cost? I don't know. Man, you don't look at prices when you buy games like this. You just <laughs> click. You just click. I'm having that yep. for 400 pounds. Man, I saw it and I clicked it <clears> and I'm uh, one of my best purchases this year. No, oh, well, if you're happy, that's fine. That's all that matters. Mm. I fully agree. And I'm actually tempted to get it because if it's that much like Commandos, then... Well, tell you what, I'll, I'll See, bring I you the desk, yeah? I don't think <clears> I ever did play Commandos. I played Commando based on the Arnold Schwarzenegger film that was like a... Was nah, like I, think Atari, you, I think you might have the better deal there. Atari game. Well, I, I don't mean that and uh, Predator on the Atari as well. Right. Uh, they were Probably, was it the Red Sonja game? I never played that. No. no. no or, no. or Red Heat. Red Heat, aye. <laughs> uh, maybe that's the one I'm thinking uh, of then. I'm sure that that's got quite a lot of naked people on it. Aye, that's Red Heat. Aye, that'll be Red Heat. I mean, Red Heat is, it just starts with the, with the Russian sauna, doesn't it? It's, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. Aye, and they've, they've pixelated that bit. <laughs> How the hell have we got from what I was talking about to Red Sonja and the like? We do it quickly. That's <laughs> outrageous. Keep up, Pavel, keep you, up. You, uh, I'll give you that. You focus in on one thing, you hone in on yeah, it, you and you get, you get you ground it down to a nub. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where we have to start talking about Red Heat. Okay, I'll give you that. We can move on. We can move on. Well, we can move on. Okay, then, Ewan, tell us what you've been playing. Uh, well, I just uh, picked up a copy of off Steam as well. Um, of I'm forgetting the name. Arcanum. I mean, it has, it or has a, Arcanum. Yes, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. It has a, a subtitle. Oh, yeah. um, this is quite an old one, isn't it? It's from 2001. Oh, nice. Published by Sierra. Um, and it's oh, actually part of classic the... Classic publisher. Sierra, well, classic. I mean, you know... They had their hands in a lot, of, their fingers in a lot of pies, you know. Uh, their their uh, entire hands in a lot of uh, pies. <laughs> they've had, they're up to up to the elbow. Oh, I'm looking up Sierra now because they. Well, like, this is part of they. They've, they've released a um, a bundle on Steam of basically Sierra classics. Oh, I know. Um, and this is in there. Um, I just picked this up on its own. It was only a couple of quid, um, and but you can also get because they've got Space Quest and they have Police Quest as well, oh, nice. which. Uh, is a classic, another classic. Anything with Quest in it. Oh yeah, no, I don't know if you ever played Police Quest uh, on the Atari, but it was, uh, yeah, it, it was one of those ones where you had to sort of input text to kind of, but you just not having a manual and just kind of yeah. going right. What are we supposed to do? These these were classic. Attempting games. to buy lemonade. I remember what, what is it's lemonade? Like a building block <laughs> of our childhood. <laughs> I remember in the ZX Spectrum, I had a Sherlock Holmes game when I was oh, a yeah. kid, and uh, it took me probably about six hours just to figure out how to leave the living room. <laughs> <laughs> well, we end up, I think, in Police Quest, basically dying from. You wouldn't let you um, unholster your weapon in a cafe. So right, but it would let you fire your weapon. So if you fire <laughs> while holstered, shoot yourself in the uh, I believe femoral artery and uh, and just bleed out. In the <laughs> but see, that's good that they've actually put that in the game. Oh yeah, it's just like well, you know, if you want to shoot your weapon, it's still holstered, so you're going to die. But back to the game I've actually played more recently. Yeah. Um, Arcanum, yeah, it's uh, it's a steampunk RPG from uh, 2001. So it looks it it looks like old school Diablo. Right. Um, isometric view, kind of slightly annoying navigation um, in terms of like actually getting about the map. Uh, you can use the arrow keys to kind of move away from where it's viewed on your character, and you can click to. You have to basically click on the ground to get them to go yeah. there. But it, I, that does get a bit clunky, and it means like when you're exploring a whole area, it's a bit of a faff. That's old school yeah. RPG. Yeah. That, I've got I've gotten used to it now, and I've kind of like worked out how to use the map. I'm, um, you know, it was yeah. I think it was limiting me on the first playthrough. I was just like, I'll oh, just get through this. <laughs> and now I'm feeling a bit more leisurely after having not saved on my first playthrough and just died. Because uh, again, old school. You yeah. know, you, you oh, just think, oh, everything will have at least some kind of save. Nah. Um, these are classic mistakes. Nah. <laughs> well, yeah. So you you start off on a zeppelin as it's steampunk, and then um, it's it kind of it kind of plunges you into the story in a really odd way where you kind of you're on this zeppelin it gets attacked by uh, orcs in biplanes 
Uh, the... I'm getting it. There's orcs <laughs> attacking a blimp. I need it. And <laughs> buy points. Yeah. yeah, of course. Or some yeah, yeah. airship thing. No. And it, 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 it crashes in the mountains. You're the only survivor. And some gnome guy in a cutscene goes, Here you, have this ring. You must get it to some person. You're like, what? And then some other guy turns up and joins your party. And he's like, ah, you're the reincarnation of some elf guy. You need to come <laughs> along with me. And I think you can just like... Just kind of naff off. Just leave. You probably kill the guy at the start if you really want to. Um, although I've sort of kept him with me. I'm like, oh, do you know what? I'll play through what's yeah, going I'll on. I'll play properly. your game. Yeah, because ultimately, to begin with, it does kind of help having him around. He he can heal you, or you can get a healing spell immediately. But um, these spells just getting him to do it for you. Um, and yeah, you basically there's it's the usual sort of thing. Go to various towns find quests to talk to people there is a lot of emphasis like there is a lot of proper RPG stuff in though um, you know a lot of, like choices in uh, conversation and things like that and um, your alignment and your sort of actions are important um, if you in conversation you kind of like I went a human character the first time it didn't really have any particular sort of bonuses to like uh, like you charisma and beauty or a couple of your sort of base stats and that does seem to affect how people are disposed to you particularly like beauty um most people i was going up to it was just saying they were suspicious of me like and they all act like openly said i don't like the look of you <laughs> i'm not, uh, and you'd, you'd have to kind of like worm your way in a conversation and it felt like you'd be a bit demeaning so i've, I've restarted as a half elf and they've got a bit more uh pretty to yourself yeah up. Oh, right. Basically, I don't want to go full elf because apparently they're te- the elf. You get a sort of penalty on uh, technological stuff in this, and basically with it being steampunk, there's all sorts of like you can get guns. Basically, so you got guns, swords, and magic, and all sorts. And there's a like there's crafting in it as well. Um, this is like seem to be a whole bunch of crafting recipes for like herbalists and um, there's oh, ele- cool. electricity and things like that to make different items. Um, so there seems to be a lot of like a lot of stuff you can do with the character build when you essentially set it up. You've got you know male or female, whatever your race is, and there's quite a few races. You have got like, human, human, uh, elf, dwarf, half elf, half dwarf, half orc, half ogre, things Holy like that. Holy shit, that's plenty. Yeah. yeah, that's quite funny. You've got all this the pictures of them, and you've got all these uh, slightly orcish looking people in suits. Oh, so you off. can get a half ogre in a suit. Oh, yeah, 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 like, the, you, the, you always start off in a suit in this. That's brilliant. That's, that's, like that sounds suit. like Shadowrun, but instead of cyberpunk, it's got a steampunk yeah, setting. Yeah, basically. Um, it's it's quite, quite an interesting setting, and they've obviously put a lot of thought into it. They, you know, it comes with the old school manual on a, um, I guess, a PDF sort of thing. Um, and you can read through that at your leisure. There's just tons of backstory, and I went sort of about three pages in and they hadn't actually started explaining how the game worked yet it was still just sort of a long backstory of this world so yeah there's um, quite a lot going on in it uh, from that aspect and they have the like the levelling up uh, well the sort of the character builds um, with your you have like archetypes as well which we talked about in Pathfinder we, sort of, we haven't really bothered with them and their sort of yeah. basic thing but there's massive selection of archetypes in this I think I went like a snake handler son of a snake handler in the first one. <laughs> gives you that, like a, is that not just an insult? It, essentially it gives you a, a Aye, slight, son of a snake handler it, it gives you an immunity to po- like higher immunity to poison and uh, slight <clears throat> penalty to beauty because you've been you've, you've, you're scarred from all the bites yeah. everywhere which is probably why people didn't like the look of me <laughs> Um, I, I think start, I went, I've, I've, I've gone around a few of them. Currently, I'm playing as a son of a great hero because you basically you start off with a plus one sword. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what uh, I'm But you basically you have to. <laughs> well, you have to. The problem is to do that, and I was like, well, I'm going to play through it sort of fairly standardly anyway. So you have to sort of. I think you have to kind of keep a good alignment in that. Right. Because if you do anything bad as this hero's son, everyone's like, oh man. How the mighty have fallen. Know, just pissing on your on your father's legacy here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'll probably play it in a in a fairly heroic uh, manner. And a pretty um, manner. So far, I've been trying to you know help people out and everything like that, do quests and everything, and get into some dungeons. Mainly just been fighting wolves and things so far. But the the combat's kind of like just this sort of turn based, well, sort of World of Warcraft style, you know, where you're hacking at each other but not in proper sort of real time thing. Um, and I 
seem to just score a lot of critical misses and get ripped out, ripped on by my uh, this, uh, this companion, this weird religious guy called Virgil. Oh, uh, no. And he just keeps he just turns up at the start and just starts telling you stuff like, "Oh yeah, you're this reincarnation, this guy. I can't remember the names of anything. I'm I'm useless at this." <coughs> so yeah. So he's a religious guy. He follows you. And and he says you're in reincarnation. Oh yeah, uh, that yeah. sounds like a start of a cult. Oh, basically, yeah, it does. Yeah. I. So oh, he's be- your believer. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. He well he he he's part of a larger religion that but yeah, and he's like a, an apprentice or something like that because he keeps going off. Oh, <laughs> I don't know anything, mate. <laughs> I know the rough outline, but I don't know anything. So you'll have to get it filled in by other people you meet on the way in a sort of quest that you'll do. Um, something like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah are you enjoying it you I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying it I'm, I, I was initially slightly daunted as I am with a lot of these things where there's a lot of choice in the um, the sort of leveling up because essentially you get a, a, well you start off to customise your character you get five points and you can put that into any of your eight uh, base stats so you've got your usual strength which strength does damage does, um, deals with damage and your HP essentially um, the rest of them all, sort of like dexterity, affects a lot of like what you can uh, skills you can upgrade because um, you've got a separate you've got your sort of base stats and then these various skills which you can upgrade to I think like a maximum of five points, um, but they'll presumably you have to have like a minimum base stat to upgrade those. So like dex having good dexterity affects a lot of them, um, but like things like if you've got high intelligence you can learn more spells and things like that. But you're, you'll get one point every time you level up, and you can put it into any of these things. Right. So it all kind of works in tandem. So you, you kind of, I guess, have to plan a little bit how you're going to do things yeah, as that you level up. pretty convoluted. It, it, it is a bit, but I've kind of, having gone through it a bit now, I'm like, I can see how it's all working together. Because obviously you can, I've, I've started putting my dodge up just to like, yeah, well, you know, just makes things a bit easier in combat because I'm probably not going to be a total bruiser. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've got to the point where, right, I'm going to have to start putting more points in dexterity so that I can put my dodge up more. But I don't necessarily need to bother until you get to that point. So it's not like too taxing. And then you can kind of, there is, a, I mean, there's a lot of skills and a lot of uh, a lot of crafting options, a lot of spells you can learn. So it's just keeping an eye on what sort of base stats and it all kind of derives from those. So uh, in terms of combat, because yeah? you've mentioned it's sort of like Diablo, yeah? Yeah, it's just. Are you just classic. hammering that mouse button, you? No, you don't. I uh, don't. Um, you just. You. It's like I say, World of Warcraft. Thing, you just. You go into you just, combat and you stay attacking. I think you. I haven't unlocked many sort of special attacks or anything at this point. But like there spell are special attacks. attacks but there will be. Yeah. There's going to be like icons on screen you click on yeah. or yeah. buttons. Okay, good. So you can set all that stuff up, but so far I'm just hacking at stuff with a sword. And your companions, if there are any, they just AI. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's been pretty good so far. It certainly, it's been keeping me healed. The amusing thing in this is that if you uh, you have like your life H- HP or whatever, yeah, sauce, um, and they don't describe it as MP for magic points, but you've, obviously it's blue, which is oh, sta- standard standard color. Yeah, yeah. But um, if that goes to zero, you go unconscious. Oh. <coughs> um, so I've had frequently the guy just overhealing in combat and then just fucking lying down <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> oh yeah, I love this game. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's I've healed you to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you only you only ever die if you get down to zero hit points. But if you're if you're lying on the floor because you've used all your magic, <laughs> then you're going to get knocked out. You're going to get killed pretty quickly. Excellent. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best thing you've said about this game so nah, this far. <laughs> it's really got my interest. I love that kind of nonsense. <laughs> I, I, I can see you getting well into this one. But see, the things that really irritate people about games are the things that I love about them. <laughs> well, like uh, it's quite you know it's quite an interesting thing because usually it is one of those things where there's no penalty to just like it's just this resource that you use up to a point and they go, all right, well I've got to regenerate it or take a magic potion or something <clears> like that. Um, it just, it, it, yeah, making it work differently is always. I, I like people trying different things with the, the fantasy setting. Yeah, you know my feelings about fantasy in general. Yeah, like generic I can't fantasy. <laughs> can he go? Can he go a fantasy? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's proven to be quite enjoyable so far, and the leveling up isn't as daunting as I thought it would be. Um, I think anyone 
you might be slightly put off to begin with, but it's it's sort of persevering through all that choice to you know, it basically it I think it what it does is it's quite well set up for to annoy people who stick to really sort of boring RPG archetypes like oh I'm gonna human fighter, for example. Um or oh, I'm just gonna be like a, I'm gonna be a wizard, I'm gonna be a rogue. There's a lot more subtlety to how you how you're gonna set up your character in this. Right, can I ask a question that seems completely unrelated, but <coughs> yeah. I want to ask Pavel something. The, because you're a fan of vampire RPGs and stuff, aren't you? I'm a fan of various RPGs, but vampire definitely was part of my high school. Okay, so experience. vampire the masquerade bloodlines. Very much so, yes. It's the same people that made uh, this game. Tro- Troika. Yeah. Troika games. Yeah. The same ones that did Bloodline. Yeah. Bloodlines. Ooh. So um, there you go. Nah, that, this was their first game. Uh, thank you very much. I'm picking it up in a few hours. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> cool. Anything else, Ewan? Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to say about that. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, hopefully the pair of you have. <laughs> you seem to be sold on it. Uh, I, well, see, I'm, I'm thinking about the kind of time I might have to put into something like this, and I don't know if I've got that time. Well, moment, yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll you don't see. have to play. You don't Pavel. have to play along to see the guy knock himself out through using too much magic. All right. Well, I might pick it up then, because right. <laughs> that's probably worth. And it. it's only a couple of quid. <laughs> Right, so that's uh, Arcanum or Arcanum, however mm-hmm. you want to call it, of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. Yes. And that's developed by Troika Games, published by Sierra, and it came out on, oh, in, the, in Europe, August the 24th, 2001. It's weird because it, I'm trying to, I'm like, 2001, I'm sure games looked better by the time this. Well, I just kind of looked, I mean, I've just got a Wikipedia article up by it here because that's where all the information in the right. world is these days. Um, and apparently. There was a quote that I read. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the criticisms by a reviewer, which said, there's nothing flattering about the dated, washed-out, low-resolution graphics. Oh, de- I mean, it definitely is, and it's really simple. But, I mean, I guess it was, obviously, Troika's first game. Um, and yes. it's and it's been well well received. I mean, it's but everybody see, talking about it. It's, you know, I've always said it. it's never the graphics that make a game. It's, it's the just, gameplay. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, there are clunky elements to that, but there's a, it does enough... That's sort of interesting and different to keep you hooked. Right, cool. Oh, apparently there's a multiplayer mode. Is that true? Yeah, I noticed that. Um, I didn't. Obviously, I didn't really check it out. Right, I was, I was on my own. Oh, well, one, maybe we we'll find out more about that yeah. later then. Right, yeah. So that's Arcanum or Arcanum, whatever. <laughs> okay, is it my turn to speak? All right, right, because I'm here to talk to you about something completely stupid. <laughs> that, which, that doesn't surprise us. <laughs> which, uh, it, it was a streamer's favourite for a while. Like, this is a game that pretty much, if you, if you were one of these silly streamers, you probably played it. Um, so I jumped on the bandwagon and started streaming it myself. Uh, it's My Summer Car, <laughs> which uh, is, is a silly game. Finland which, Simulator. Yeah, Finland Simulator 2016. <laughs> um, it, came, it came out in early access this year. It's still in early access as far as I know. Now, it's... It's kind of weird, this game, right? This is a game which is supposed to be a sort of race and driving game, <laughs> but it's also just a survival game at the same time, all right? So you're basically just this Finnish guy. I think possibly you might be able to play as a woman, but I'm not sure. Um, but we'll just say it's a guy, right, because that's what I'm playing as. Um, and you just spawn in your little Finnish house, which is out in the middle of nowhere. It's just the same It's the same thing every time, Um you play the game there's no random generation here or anything like that so you're in your house and then out in your garage there's just bits of a car and all laid out all on shelves and everything like that and you've got this sort of shell of a car sitting in your driveway and the object of this game is really to build this car and then apparently you can enter races in it i've not got that far all right because building this car you really actually need to know how to build a car in order to build this fucking car by the way <laughs> Like this, this goes down to like really tiny details. You have to build the engine piece by piece, All right. and you have to also screw the every bit in that needs to be screwed in, and you have to get the right size spanner and all that sort of thing. Like you need to, it goes so in depth for this. Right. Now I've got as far as building the engine. This thing I've seen and you driving th- about. In this thing. Yeah, but hang on, I'm, I'm going to get to that. All right, all right. I'm going to get to that. Build this engine yourself. I did not build this engine myself. There was an actual Finnish guy <laughs> came into the chat. All right, and when I was streaming this, who said that he'd built car engines in the real life, and he helped me to put this engine together. He was just like, "Oh yeah, you need to put this bit on next." So I was just like, "All right, brilliant." <laughs> how how thematically yeah, correct, thematically correct. And he was sitting there just laughing at all the things because they 
I mean, they take the piss, like, um, and I'm assuming that this is a Finnish designer because you know they think it's somebody else, but they do take the piss out of Finnish lifestyle here. I mean, you've got a sauna in your house and stuff like that. That's all pretty standard for right. Finland, but I mean, um, when you see other people driving around in it, they're generally got a can of lager in their hand and they're smoking, <laughs> and they've got like they're sitting, they're sitting um, like bare chested and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, and you like you can go to the the shop and stuff like that and the shop's also a bar and all this it's just like stupid things just ah. taking the absolute piss out of it. but it's silly it's supposed to be silly right. um, now one of the things is that I made a 12 minute video um, I mean it was I edited my stream one of my streams down into 12 minutes so how much I failed at this game and it wasn't even me trying to build this car or anything this was me getting in the van that you've got and trying to drive to the shop to buy drinks um, well to buy beer basically ah. and you also have to buy a fan belt because you don't have the fan belt in your garage for your engine you've got to get that oh, so buy that a, at the shop you've got a spare van that you can just drive yeah around. you've got a spare van oh, right. oh yeah but you're trying to build a sort of like, a, an cool. actual car yeah um, now driving to the shop was just a complete effort now because this is like I say this is a survival game so you've got thirst you've got hunger um, you've, you've got a urine meter um, by the way, you can take a piss anywhere you want. All right, well, it doesn't matter. No. I, I took a piss in the shopkeeper's face. Um, he didn't see me care. See, I don't think they're too bothered about that. Sort of thing. <laughs> Maybe not about pissing in the face, but just yeah, yeah, yeah. less less bothered about where you piss. Yeah, just where you piss. Um, oh, by the way, there's mosquitoes everywhere as well. Just playing this game, there's just this constant... <laughs> <laughs> just going on all the time. Oh, you have God. to go and buy mos- uh, mosquito spray from the shop if you want to get rid of that noise. Right. <laughs> but, but I made a 12 minute video of me just trying to get to the shop in this van now. It's all just rural back roads until you get to the main road that takes you th- yeah. to the actual shop. But like, the shop's not far away from that main road. So <laughs> you're driving up these rural back roads, and I just kept flipping the van and. I died so many times because you will just die if you cry if you smack your van into a tree or something yeah. like that, you're dead. Yeah. Like and, and you have to go back to the start of the game. Like you can't save it or anything. Yeah, you just and pick up where you left off. Like you Well, careful you. Um <laughs> you have to just go back to the start. Yeah. And start again. <laughs> so, like, if you like built your engine up and stuff with that, I went, oh no, hang on, I need the fan belt, and then drive to the shops and die on the way there. That's that fuck. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> uh, the game oh, brutal, really yeah. is. Like for a game that looks like this, it's just absolutely brutal. I mean, but it's it's really interesting that they've made a game that is basically just about building a car up so you can race it. But also put survival elements just put all in the, it. All, this, all the survival things yeah. that you would find in a survival game are in this game. Um, it's, and it's like it's roguelike almost as well because of the way that it's one life and you're ah. and that's it. Like, <laughs> and then, and then Pavel, uh, you watched my 12 minute video which basically consisted of me trying to drive to the shops. I flipped my van. I couldn't get it out of a ditch so I basically dragged all the beer that I'd got out of the van. I took my beer with me. Obviously, oh, yeah. you take a case of beer with you in the van when you're yeah. driving. And you drink it when you're driving as well because that's that's well, yeah. that's obviously acceptable. I just saw you swearing at other drivers for the Yeah, and I was swearing at other drivers. I accidentally got in somebody else's car no. and then didn't couldn't figure out how to make him stop <laughs> until he'd driven me miles away. Um, and I was just sitting there. There is There are several buttons in this game to let you swear at people. Um, and finish um, so so that's fun um, but yeah so basically I gave up on life in this video in fact I think that's what I called the video uh, Chris gives up on life I, I remember you eventually giving up uh, yeah. somewhere on one, uh, one of those country roads uh, drinking up all the beer I sat and just there. waiting for the end yeah I sat there at the side of the road just drinking every single beer and the the screen starts to sway when you've done that. Like you're just like swaying and swaying and swaying. But then at one point the game glitched a bit and the van got stuck inside me, so I managed to drag it out. But uh, then I got stuck again. So. The van got stuck inside of you. Yeah, it got stuck inside of me. So it was uh, it was an interesting glitch. Watching so. you for those uh, twelve minutes, and however, uh, those futile attempts to actually escape the forest all alone, <laughs> just you and your beer. Um, and things were getting more and more surreal. I actually generally had a Blair Witch Project uh, <laughs> sort of thoughts. I, I kept watching it. I just I kept remembering that film. And I was like, 
you know, like found yeah. footage. That's how Chris <laughs> ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. I thought you were like you were actually just trying to add another element to this and turn it into a horror game. As no, well. no, no. It's just I could I could see this <clears throat> this being a, a beginning <laughs> of of a horror film. It sounds like it's already a horror film. <laughs> yeah, it pretty much is. It's about it's ba- how it's basically just a miracle that anybody gets through the day. Oh yeah. Really. Uh, you know, a question. You can't just maybe get to the shops. Technical question. Can you not? Take the engine from your van and put it in the car. Oh, well, that's not how engines work, though, is it? My knowledge of cars is, is, is minimal. <laughs> but I think because the point of the game is that you build your car up from scratch. Right. I mean, there's no, like, you can't really choose what way you want to build your car up or anything like that. You You've got all the right. bits and you just have to do it right, aye. Um, <clears throat> now, I've not got any further in it because I, I had to stop the stream after I'd finished the engine and now I have to actually put the car together. Like so, the full car has to go together as well. Because, oh, like right. I say, you've just got the shell out there, ah. <clears throat> so you've got to fit the suspension and all that sort of nonsense in the gearbox and put the steering wheel in, and all that sort of stuff. And I don't know what order to do it in. I'm, I'm hoping this Finnish guy comes back into the chat and um, when the next time I stream it and ah. actually helps me out with this. <laughs> Question number two. Yes, go for it. How is how is a car <clears throat> better than a van? You have a van. Why do you need? I a think car? the idea is that you're you're building a racing car. Is uh, the idea here? You can't race in a van. Yeah, gotcha. But I mean, you you could try and race in a van, but I don't, that I van's saw not you very try fast. outrace but yourself. See the driving side of it. I mean, it goes into even more depth in terms of like you have to actually turn the engine on. But like you, your van's a diesel, so you've got to wait for the coils oh, to right. like uh, the coil light to go off before you can actually turn it on. I mean, you have to change gears manually and stuff like that. Uh, as I was well. going to say, like, is the controlling of the is that. Kind of where you were having difficulty with it. Oh, yeah, man. Getting... I'm trying to control it because it's like first person controlling of a car Aye. Um, when you're sitting in the driver's seat and stuff. That's always difficult in games, yeah. I find anyway. Aye, it's difficult to get so, a perspective on what you're, yeah. how you're supposed to be moving. <clears throat> so you're sitting in the driver's seat of this van, Aye. like trying to control this thing on this very narrow country road. And they've deliberately, the bastards that designed this game, they've deliberately done stuff so that the roads that you're going along, there's rocks at this side, or there's ditches at the other side and stuff. I and you're the... just trying to go to the shop for. <laughs> I noticed the road has a heavy camber on it as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, roads, the roads are all mental. Yeah. And then once you get onto the main road, there's other people on the main road. I died trying to overtake somebody because I overtook him and then I was going that fast at that point. I couldn't get control of my van back and I just hit a tree. Um, <laughs> that sounds like real life to me. It does sound like real life, yeah. And I was probably drunk at the time as well. Yeah. Um, In real life too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't try this at home, kids. Like, seriously, don't try this I at home. Don't try and make like, a car. Don't get drunk don't one. Okay, so and drive do, a van into a tree. Do we want to visit Finland now? Um, I don't know. I, I sort of I mean, this. I, I don't think this game is really it's an not trying to sell it. It's not like I, I don't think they're trying to say, agency. come to Finland, here's what it's like. That's, that's not what they're going for here. Hmm. <laughs> you, you, you get there and you're disappointed the countryside isn't all sort of like C, CGI. Yeah. And there's not just people swearing at each other and pissing uh, all over the place. Not just vans smashing. In the <laughs> I don't know. You might be surprised. I think we should go and and scout it out. Oh man, if you want to organise a holiday to Finland for us, I'm up for it. No. Might just do that and stream Take from us that. To Finland. <laughs> a, a real life build build my own car in Finland. We could we could just we we could cosplay that. Huh? Well, all I'll say about my summer car, though, I think I've had my fun with it so far. I'd quite like to build that car, but I've not got a, f- a clue where to go with Just it now. This is aye, well, this is a this is a call for help, really. So, if there's anybody listening to this that knows how to build that car in my summer car that wants to come into Twitch chat and help me out, um, please do let me know, ah. um, and I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll fire it up and get the get the streaming on the go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a silly game. I've got I think I've got what I wanted out of it, which was a 12 minute video complete nonsense so that's that's all I've, that's all I ask for that's, all I ask for that and a paycheck <laughs> and the love of the job well, yeah the love of the job I think we all tend to look for different things in video games but that's fine that's okay <laughs> yeah so that's my summer car by Amstech Games um, and I think that's our video game section done so we're going to have a quick break um, Pavel are you leaving us? yes I need to run Okay, so Pavel's not going to be with us for the board game section, but when we come back, it'll be me and Ewan talking about some party games. It's fine, I haven't played those anyway. They played them without me. You were invited. Aye. You decided to to go and dress up and pretend to be somebody else. 
I'm sure that's not Role what happens. Role-playing, I think, it, that's what you call it. Oh, yeah. Role-playing doesn't involve dressing up. Ah, uh, you put a cloak on, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. You put on a wizard hat. You put hat on and a robe. cloak. <laughs> I'll better go now. <laughs> right, we'll be back in a minute. Bye! And we are back, and it's uh, just me and you now, Ewan. Aye. Time for a regular regular old party. Regular. Yes. Old. <laughs> Let's party. It's Aye. Christmas time, so we might yeah. as well party. Well, yeah, these are the games you're going to want to play. Yeah, these games Christmas here. Time. <laughs> so first, we're going to talk about Ultimate Werewolf, <laughs> um, which we managed to... I just never... <laughs> doesn't sound stupid. To... Ultimate Werewolf! <laughs> 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 I just called it Werewolf. Yeah, it's called Ultimate Werewolf. Oh, well, yeah. the version we have is, the is Ultimate. called Ultimate Werewolf. Ultimate. Now, we managed to play this a few weeks ago. Um, so we got a bunch of people together and we all had a few drinks and stuff. Yeah. And uh, we, we had quite a few folk, actually. We had a, we had a serious game of these. Yeah, both of these 14 actually. people or something like something that. Like that yeah, all yeah. crammed into this living room. <laughs> so Generating too much heat for the room to handle. That's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, Ultimate Werewolf is uh, is an interesting one. It's got its roots in a game called Mafia, which was a Russian game hmm. uh, made back in the seventies or something, I believe. Um, in which uh, you had to basically work out who was in the mafia and who wasn't. Now, the way that Werewolf works, it's a similar thing. You're basically playing this uh, sort of fantasy medieval village in which some werewolves have invest and in, in invested and in, so some werewolves have invested in this village. So it's less. Of a, I was going to say it was less of a less of a critique of capitalism than the uh, mafia might have been, but you know, maybe maybe they kept it going. They've infested this village, I should have said. Ah, right. So what happens is you've got a bunch of cards, um, and your card will tell you whether you're a werewolf or you're a villager. Now there are other roles that you can add into this game, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so we played because it was the first thing that. Pretty much everybody in the room had played it other than one person. We just played sort of bog standard werewolf in which there was a couple of werewolves and everybody else was a villager and we had one person who was the seer. Mm -hmm. um, now what happens in this game um, is that you everybody goes to sleep. Uh, sorry, no, that's not what happens. You deal out <laughs> the cards to everybody ah. first. That's that's the first thing that happens. Everybody has so, a role. That's okay. The werewolves will know that they're a werewolf. The villagers will know that they're villagers. But nobody knows who anybody else is. That's the whole point of the game. Um, now, we start off with a sleeping phase. So everybody goes to sleep. Now, by that, everybody just closes their eyes, makes sure that nobody can see. No cheating, people. No cheating. Ah, um, and then... People. Somebody, the moderator, the person that's running the game, who isn't actually taking part in the game itself, will say, okay, werewolves wake up. So the werewolves wake up, and if there's two werewolves, those two will make sure that they know who each other are. Um, I think, did we play with three, actually? Yeah, we played with three I think werewolves. we played with three because we had enough Because we had enough people yeah. for it, yeah. Um, so the werewolves will know who each other are, and then they will go back to sleep. And then, because we were playing with the seer, now the seer's got a special ability, which is that they can point to somebody... And the moderator has to then silently tell them if that person's a werewolf or not. Now, so the seer will wake up on their own. They'll point to somebody. The moderator will indicate in some manner um, whether that's a werewolf or not. And then they'll go back to sleep. Then everybody wakes up. Now, the whole point of this game is the whole social deduction thing. Yeah. It's all about talking to each other, making vague accusations. Oh, yeah. Um, and basically just trying to figure out who's a werewolf. Who looks guilty? Um, who looks guilty, which was a slight issue in the game that we played because we've got one friend who always looks guilty. <laughs> he was and kind of honed in on every <laughs> single time. Um, yeah, it, it can be difficult because, like, it's... I suppose it's not meant to be... With it being a set apart large group game, it's not meant to be entirely serious because you're not, no. not going to... You're not just going to... There's no method... Set way of going right, and you, you're gonna you're gonna yeah. deduce who the werewolf is through a series of clues. You've literally just got each other's word to go on. Yeah, that's it. So it can descend into, and pretty much every game we played did descend into what you would expect it to become, um, in a sort of like peasant uh, <laughs> superstitious village. Is that yeah, the werewolves win because they end up everybody just ends up blaming each other and killing each other. I don't think the were did the werewolves win. I think they did. The first I think they thing. won the first game. They didn't did, they? yeah. Um, I think that was the only game that won because I think we played three games of it. Was it three or was it two? Yeah, I think it was three. 
Um, but the, the thing is that like when you, we're talking about day and night phases, so during the day that's when everybody's talking, and during the night that's when everybody's sleeping. Now, yeah. The day phase. And then the first day is always just a fiasco, like you say, because nobody knows anything about anybody right. else other than the seer. Um, because in that first night phase, the seer will know the person at the point that is either a werewolf or a villager. But nobody knows who the seer is. Yeah. Now, the seer has got... It's an interesting thing, that, because if you're only playing with that one special ability of the seer, the seer, um, if they know that somebody's a werewolf, they can't go blabbing about it. Like they can't go making it too obvious that they know somebody's a werewolf because they're just drawing a target on their back, basically. Yeah. Because what happens is that in the day phase, the village, uh, the village all talks to each other. Um, the werewolves will be thrown out. You know, oh, I think that person's a werewolf because they don't uh. want to be found out themselves. But then the villagers have to vote to lynch somebody, basically. They have to. Vote they don't to have just... to do it every time, do they? I think they do. No, somebody has they to die. To somebody them. has to die. <laughs> It's, it's, it's that was, kind of village, man. It's a village gripped in werewolf fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have a like somebody can accuse somebody of being a werewolf. If somebody seconds that, then they have a vote. Now that person gets a chance to defend themselves. They can make a small speech, say why they're not a werewolf, basically. As they're having the noose. <laughs> yeah, as they're having their neck. the noose is going around their neck. That's they're like, I'm it innocent. It, every time you were forced into that position of having to like sort of do that, you did honestly feel like that's what you were doing. You were just scrambling for. I'm innocent. Yeah. <laughs> you felt like someone like a Witchfinder movie or something like when it, Oh yeah, just yeah. being just yelling at this group of people who have condemned you for no good reason. <laughs> So yes, the village will then hang somebody, and there's various ways you can play werewolves. So like, if when somebody dies, um, the basic way of doing it is that they will reveal the role. But there is another way of playing the game where nobody reveals the role when they die, which makes the whole thing even more confusing. And yeah. I don't know if I could handle playing it that way. Um, so somebody, the village votes to kill somebody. That person dies. They'll reveal the role. If they were a werewolf, great. The village have got a werewolf out of the game. If it was a villager, oh dear. They've just killed one of their own. It's a dwindling number of villagers. And as soon as that person dies, everybody goes back to sleep. We go back to night. Now, the werewolves get to wake up again at night, and then they get to agree to kill somebody. Obviously, this all has to be silent, um, so the werewolves will kill somebody. They'll go back to sleep. Everybody wakes up again. The person that got uh, voted to be killed by the werewolves then dies at that point, um, and then everybody kind of goes, Ooh, what happened there? <laughs> Um, and this is why when you're the seer you don't want to make it too obvious that you're the seer because yeah. the werewolves will then just kill you at night now you keep playing the game until one of two things happens um, either the werewolves are all dead or there's the same amount of villagers left as werewolves left I think is the, the other that's condition we playing, that's how yeah. the werewolves win um, and I think in the first game that did happen. I think we got down to four people, and there was two werewolves left. I think. Well, I think it makes sense because, like, in the, in the mechanics of the game, there's no way at that point that the the villagers, could, even if they sort of knock off a werewolf yeah. each night, they're still going to one of them's going to die. Yeah, that's each right. Time, so. Now, the other roles that you can add into the game. That's when the game becomes much more interesting because then you get things like. Um, what what was the one that you were you when you were a werewolf? Was that not the baby? I was the you baby, were the baby wolf. wolf. You were the baby wolf, and the baby wolf. That's an interesting one because if the baby wolf does get killed, um, then the werewolves go on a anger fueled rampage that night and kill multiple people. Yeah. Because you killed their baby. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> they're just yeah, they're just in a blood bloody rage. And that's true. Um, so you got things like the the sorceress. So the sorceress looks for the seer. So at night, they'll wake up separately. Um, they can point at somebody. Um, if they find oh, the seer, right. the moderator tells them, yes, that's the seer. Okay. Um, you've got, like, s- s- there's just there's so many interesting roles in this. Like, you've yeah. got, th- like, the witch, um, which my girlfriend used to oh, quite yeah. effectively. Um, the witch is on the villager's side, and uh, the witch can save a player, um, or they can eliminate a player once a game. Um, that's quite an interesting one. Um, we've got the lichen who's on the villager's side but the lichen always appears as a werewolf to the seer so if the seer points at the lichen um, the, the moderator has to say that's a werewolf potentially tragic consequences potentially tragic yep 
Um, things like the spellcaster. This was one of the funnier ones that we used because the spellcaster can choose a player who is not allowed to speak <laughs> during the day phase, and the person that was the spellcaster when we Just played for this role kept pointing at the same person who was annoying him. <laughs> it, was, it was used to great effect. Um, We've got the village idiot. Uh, the village idiot always votes for players to be eliminated. They're not allowed to say, no, I want that person to live. <laughs> uh, the disease, that was a fun one. So again, on the villager's side. Um, if the diseased is eliminated by werewolves, the werewolves are not allowed to eliminate anyone the following night because they become diseased themselves. Mm. Oh, the tanner. This was one of the games that we played which ended in one person winning because the tanner is basically on their own team and the tanner hates... The Tanner, it says in the card, you hate your job and your life. You win if you die. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Tanner. And yeah. that person won the game by yeah. getting themselves killed. Uh, and it was it was Sarah, wasn't it? It was Sarah, yeah. um, our friend Sarah, Scott, played, who Scott spent the entire game just sitting there looking guilty and trying to be as quiet as possible so that people would think, oh, she's up to something. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's like, yeah, I do remember this is going on, like... She's up to something. What's going? <laughs> She's being awfully yeah, yeah. quiet. Get her lynched. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun game. It was a lot more fun than I expected it to yeah, be. I thought I really it was going to be a complete debacle and that people wouldn't talk to each other and stuff like that. I think the drinking helped. I think the fact that we had a few drinks yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you just get on with it. Uh. People, like, their tongues loosened. And what was quite interesting to me was that people that came along that probably didn't think they were going to enjoy it um, seemed to be the people who enjoyed it the most. Yeah, it just got right into it. Um, yeah. Like, my girlfriend, I've said many times before, is not a gamer. She got well into this. Mm. Like, she got so into it. When she was the witch, she was like, anytime oh, I, because I, I was moderating that game, and anytime I woke her up, she, she would like, get up, with, open her eyes with a smile on her face, as if to say, oh, I'm going to do something here. Like, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, like, it was, it was such an enjoyable thing, and I can understand why this game is massive now. Like, yeah. I always looked at this game and just thought just, it looks a bit silly, but no, this game's great fun. Uh, like, just uh, seriously have a go of it and getting the cards and stuff of like that. You could make your own at home if you wanted to. Um, and you, I mean, you can play it quite quickly as well. I, I would just say at any gathering of folk over over like ten people, you want to you'd want to just get break at least it a few out, rounds right? of this. Yeah, just yeah, go for it. Absolutely. I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed this. And like I say, the addition that we've got, um, it's Ultimate Werewolf. It is by uh, Bezier Games, so that's Ted Alspach. Mm. He, he designed this particular one. Um, and there are other versions of it out there. There's one which is quite popular called One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the differences are. I just know that quite a lot of people play it. Right. Uh, but I think all these werewolf games have all got similar things and similar roles and all. it's all the same idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely a good game. Quality. So we'll move on to our next party game, which is uh, Two Rooms and a Boom, which is another quite popular party game. And it's it's got similarities to Werewolf, but it's also quite different Yeah. Um, in the way that it's played. Um, there's no sort of day and night phases or anything like that. Um, now, it's called Two Rooms and a Boom for a reason. You Basically, need you need two rooms. And, and at least... Six people? Yeah, you can play it with six. I wouldn't. I can't imagine I that would work very well. Nah, um, playing it with a big group of people, I mean, probably more than ten yeah. would be the way to play this, because you need to have two separate rooms with uh, bunches of people in both rooms. Um, well, yeah, I mean, essentially it works for you. You split people into the t- two rooms and you all have a role, and someone's going to be the bomber, someone's going to be the president. Um, and over a series of rounds, you'll Which is all secret. Yeah, ah, you've like like werewolf. You're given a card that defines your role at the start of the game, and there are. I mean, we we kind of went through a similar process with that, where we you know we went with the basics and just having the bomber and the president, and then everybody's either a set. Of you're either the blue team or the red. Team. Yeah, because the the bombers they're on the red team and the president's on the blue team. Yeah, um, and the object of the game for the the bomber is to, in the final round of the game, be in the same room as the president to blow them up. Yeah. And, there we and, go, two rooms and a boom. And in between each round, you're sort of... Because I'm, I'm assuming the idea is meant to be you're in an ongoing hostage situation. Yes. And you're, you're constantly seeing... Because you're shuffling people between each room because essentially you're moving hostages about. Um, and that'll all be done based on, you know, you'll sort of all have a bit of a chat and then decide who you want to send into another room. Um, yeah, it was... I found it not quite... It, it didn't 
flow quite as well as Werewolf for me. Yeah. It was just sort of, there was something about it. It was a bit more chaotic. Yeah, and trying to kind of, maybe because we've got quite small, narrow rooms, trying to sort of like discuss with another, like just talk with another individual and sort of be like, all right, um, because the idea is that you're, you you can opt to show your your yeah. card to another person. There are various ways of showing your card to yeah. other people in this And there's certain rules that will affect it. Like there's, yeah. there's, I think there's like an agent one that lets you, um, if you, or you, you, if you ask to see someone's card, they have to show it. Yeah. But there's a certain, see, this, there were certain things I couldn't quite work out with that because, and I was discussing this with Dave as we were playing it. If, so for example, that agent card that gives you that ability, surely to see that, see another person's card, you're going to have to show them yours and say, look, I've, yeah, I've, I've got to see this. That's the idea. Because otherwise they could just say, well, no. Yeah. So, it does seem to be quite loose in how you can play it with other people. This is one of the weird things about this game. The way that it's kind of, the way that they do the card sharing in this, it's almost like they're trying not to put too rigid rules on it. But Aye. at the same time, they have, because they, they clearly define in the rules the different ways that you're allowed to show cards to each other so you can do things like card share yeah. which is you actually two people looking at each other's cards as a card share yeah um and you've got a one where it's just like basically revealing your card and you just show your card to somebody else uh, but there's also color sharing options so like you can only show the color of your card but not your role all right so th- that that's in the game as well um, so I think, I think by the time that we played it, it was all getting a bit crazy. Um, people <laughs> had had quite a bit to drink and stuff uh, like that by that point. But I mean, the game worked. I mean, it oh, does, yeah. and I, I, I did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and it's got that like different dynamic to it from Werewolf because, oh, yeah. like you say, two separate rooms keeps you moving about. And you're not. It's not like all the red team are in one team in one room and all the blue team are in one room because that's just silly. Yeah, it's going to be all mixed from the start. You, you have to mix know. it all the whole thing up at the start, and nobody knows who each other is. You don't yeah. know what team everybody else is on. You don't know even if you're on the blue team, you don't know who the president is. If you're on the red team, you don't know who the bomber is. You've got to try and figure all this out as the game's going on, and then if you're on the red team, you want to get the bomber in the same room as the president. And it's all about who do you trust, yeah. like. If you've not seen somebody's card, but they're telling you that they're on a certain team and they've got a certain role or something like that, can you trust them? Do they know what colour you are? Is somebody in the other if when they were in the other room, did somebody tell them, Oh, Chris is on the red team, so go and tell him that you're on the red team and he'll like listen to you or whatever? And that's what this game is. Yeah. It's all it is, it's a game of who do you trust. Well, yeah, I was just that um that was yeah, but because you've got in this uh, you've got a moderator in each room, is it? Or if well, you got you've got someone who's the leader, leader you've in got each a team room, but they're that? they're playing as well. Though. Yeah, they're playing, so and, and that's that's a different uh, that's a different thing for the game as well. Is that you can vote? You have to have a team leader in each room, yeah, because they decide which hostages to trade at the end of each round. Yeah, um, and I should probably say that it's only like five rounds or something that you play, that's quite... and they're timed as well. Yeah, um, so the game's actually pretty quick because it's only like few minutes each round. Um, but the team leader, uh, sorry, the room leader, uh, you can basically elect a different room leader. The people in that room can elect a different room leader at any time, basically, as long as they can all agree on it. Ah. Um, and that, yeah, that brings in a different dynamic to the game because then it becomes a case of, like, you have to convince the person who's the leader of that room. If you want to go into the other room, you have to convince them that you are one of the hostages he wants to send through. Yeah, I think we did that in our, in our game as well. We had a whole sort of thing about it. It's like, we need to get this guy into there so yeah. it was just a case of like look how do we do it I yeah yeah there, were, yeah, there was a, like because we knew about that rule and, but there was like there was a lot of like shuffling about to work out right, okay what are we going to do while we've got people in this room that know <laughs> what we're up to yeah uh, and it's, yeah, it's but, but that's and, and again but that's one of the things because it's only the people in that room that know what you're up aye. to so the people in the other room have no idea what's going in and on in the, yeah. the opposite room um, and that I, was what brought a lot of the the fun in it. Oh yeah, because like, you have was... that whole thing of essentially the whole team end. You can easily end up shafting themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and that happened in the last game that yeah. we played. I thought that we were onto a winner, but it turned out that the people in the other room from what the room that I was in knew exactly what was going on. Yeah. And they waited until the last round before sending the bomber through and killing the president. Yeah. <laughs> and they would worked it out so well. And you know, I take my hat off to them. I was on the losing team, but it's fair <laughs> enough. Like that's that was how the games played. Ah, so you're not you're not better there, Chris. Oh, I'm not better in the slightest. I, oh, love, yeah. I love this you game. S- you, sound, you sound like you're being awfully defensive. <laughs> and again, though, right? 
it turned out that the people that aren't the gamers and didn't think they were going to enjoy themselves loved this. Yeah. They absolutely loved this. Like, again, my girlfriend, who was the team leader, who ended up winning the game in that last round by sending the bomber through to kill oh. the president, um, she was the team leader in that room uh, that I wasn't in, and she knew exactly what was she was doing. Like, she... she she got so into the role of being that room leader yeah. that uh, oh, she, was very she, she just got uh, yeah she she was so crafty. Like, I'm I'm not going to trust her anymore. <laughs> You've learned a few things. I've learned a few things about my games. girlfriend through playing these games. One is that she's secretly a gamer and she doesn't know it. <laughs> she doesn't know it. But these like, these games, I mean, like you sort of you kind of realise that you go to parties or whatever. And, and we just stand around talking. You always kind of feel like there should be something that we're doing, but people don't go, oh, well, I don't want to play a party game because you just think yeah. you're like charades or some pish like ah. that. But these are genuine, genuinely enjoyable things you can do um, and with a large group, group of people. Like I found Werewolf, like you say, it, you thought it'd be you thought it'd be quite chaotic, but it actually worked really well. And I think Werewolf, for me anyway, I thought it was the one that worked the better out of the two in that environment where, because I think because you've got someone directing the game yeah, and that's very clear, even though the, there's a lot of looseness to how you play it, there's very defined sort of moments in the game that you go through and it keeps everybody on that sort of, some kind of schedule. They know what's coming next. Yeah. In terms I, of how you play it. I agree with you there. Like, it, Werewolf, it, it's because the moderator is the focal point of ah. the room. Um, that it, it's much more structured and people have a better idea of what's happening. With two rooms in a boom, because it's basically you're just relying on everybody kind of knowing what's going on. It's a bit more chaotic. Um, it's, it is a bit more chaotic. Um, it's, it's, I suppose that's the fun of it. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I mean, there was there was parts of it where I'm pretty sure that there was a lot of confusion about like how you share your cards with other people and stuff like that, and this some people a... were just marching up the other folk and slamming their cards into their faces well, I, actually, and being like, that. "Show me yours now." I got that and, done to me a few times. Yeah, and but at the same time, it was just like I'm, I wasn't going to stop the game and try and fix Aye. that. I was just like, you know what, just deal with it. Well, the, 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 saying that, I was doing it with the, the agent card or whatever, just because I was like, "Well, I, I'm guessing that's how this works," so I'm like, "Here you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then just and, sort of flashing it like a police badge or something like that, which I thought made sense. Um, but then there was like one in the first round of the first game. I think I kind of basically convinced someone to. It was like, maybe you, you show me like, oh, what 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 are you? And then they kind of like convinced them to show me a card, and they were like, right. And I was like, well, I'm not showing you mine. <laughs> I was, and I didn't know whether that was against the rules or it's not. Not against the rules. But I think. The, but like we say, I think the thing is that people weren't totally aware of the, the rules. Uh, um, the, the, but it got to that point it. in the night that we were all a bit pissed, to be honest, and I don't think anybody really bothered that much. Um, now, we should talk a bit more about some of the roles before we finish this yeah. up, actually, because there's there's some interesting roles in that. There are a few that we didn't use. We we kind of kept it reasonably basic when we played this game. I didn't want to go bogging everybody down with loads of extra rules, but there is a thing about conditions in this game as well. Right. So there are things like... Um, in fact, dead is a condition in this game. Right. Um, but you get things like foolish, um, and you get in love, and all these things, and it's all dependent and total, totally on the cards that you use. And you've got things like the agent, like you say, so you can privately reveal your card to a player and force that player to card share with you. Uh, so there's the rule there that was a bit confusing for people. Um, we've got things like the ambassador, and the ambassador can basically walk freely between the rooms. Um, you're not allowed to do that during this game, but if you're the ambassador, you can things like the bouncer we didn't use that one but um if you've got odd numbers of players you can use the if you're the bouncer you can show somebody your card if your room's got more people in it than the other room you can show somebody your card and tell them to get out and right. they have to go into the other room silly things like the clown where uh, you must smile at all times but see, even stuff like that could affect the game i was just looking at that one and thinking that you know that, that sort of stuff could affect the game because it's going to affect your people's perception yeah, of yeah, yeah it's like why is he so happy yeah <laughs> But I think the fact is that because you know the clown card's in the game. But then again, you could just st- everybody could stand there smiling, and everybody would think, "Well, who is the actual clown?" Aye. Then that's, uh, that's actually yeah. If I was playing with a knowledgeable group of folk, I mean, went in the first round with a room who someone was just constantly smiling. I would go if I got knocked into the other room, I would just smile constantly. Yeah, <laughs> just just the best. Oh yeah, yeah, but that's and again, but that's that's what these kind of Aye. games are about. It is about trying to convince people that you're something that you're not. Yeah. Uh, I think with the roles though there does need to be yeah that bit of familiarity about them and you've got the grey team as well yeah you've got a grey team yeah there's a grey team there's also a green team um, there's all sorts of things going on in this so the grey team they're like neutral cards who have their own winning conditions 
Um, so, like, you've got the mastermind, you win if you are the room's leader at the end, and you were the leader of the opposite room at some point during the game. That means that you win. Oh, right. um, some of the more normal roles, there's the medic, um, who, if anybody's got a condition, so, like, fear or something like that, the medic can remove it from them by just by showing them their card. What else? Oh, yeah, you've got, like, Shy Guy as well. So, Shy Guy, it's... And there's an actual picture of a Shy Guy from Mario. Uh, oh, on that card, which is quite nice. Or it's his mask, I think. Um, so who begin with the shy condition. Now, players with the shy condition are not allowed to reveal any part of their card to anybody. Um, but then, if you've got a medic in the game, they can come in and remove that from them. Right. So, all these sort of cards, they all kind of play off of each other. Um, and there's certain cards that if you put them in the game, you have to put other cards in the game as well, because that doesn't work without mm. them. Um, and basically, like having the medic in the game is pretty much a given once you start playing with all these different cards that give that conditions. Unless you want something that's mental. If you want that, a game that's completely mental. I think, well, I th- you know, to some extent, I always conditions might be interesting. But that, I mean, I think that is the big difference with this and Werewolf, where you, there, I think there does need to be a fair bit of familiarity with the. Yeah. Whereas Werewolf, you don't, you could go into that and if you're given the role, it's fairly self-explanatory how that's going to work and how it fits into the structure of the game. Yeah. Um, well, most so everybody's, of the time, everybody's on some kind of equal footing, whereas I don't think people necessarily were when we were playing two booms, two booms in a room. <laughs> two, two booms in a room. That'd be a different <laughs> you game. you got to get out of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, two rooms in a room. I think you're right about, like, if you were to play this with knowledgeable people, people that knew the rules, knew exactly what was going on, knew how all the roles worked and stuff, mm. this would, game would probably play completely differently to how we played it. Yeah. Which was just utter chaos. But, um... <laughs> But still, we have fun with that. I think. That... Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Um, I still, I mean, if I had to pick between the two of them, I would probably play Werewolf. I have to say, mm. but two rooms in a boom, like you say, it's got a, it's got a different dynamic to it. So, um, it's something interesting to throw in there. Oh yeah. Um, if you've got a bit of a party going on. Any final thoughts on that, Ewan? No, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mean to like disparage uh, two rooms in a boom. It's a it's a it's a good game, and it's. It, we shouldn't be just comparing it comparing to, it to the, just another game arbitrarily. All oh, right, yeah, it's not as good as this one. <laughs> um, no, you'd have a lot of fun, I think, with, in a party. With yeah. as, long as, oh, got two, as long as you've got two rooms, that's all you need. You only need two rooms, yeah. that's all you need. And the game. And the game. You need the game yeah, as well. That's true. And, and the people. And, and you need all the people. Yeah. Right? Actually, that's quite expensive. I, I mean, two people. rooms, that's... You know, and paying a lot of people to be your friends, ah. um, like we had to... Was, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't cheap. Oh. All right, that's two rooms and a boom. So that is published by Tuesday Night Games um, and designed by Alan Gerding and Sean McCoy. Now, well, we're going to talk about a third party game, but when we tried to play it, we didn't have enough people to actually play it. We only had seven. We're supposed to play it with at least eight. But we still want to talk about it, or we still want to let you know about it. So we thought, what better way to do that than to get the designer of the game to talk about it himself? So I did an interview with him, and here it is. I am here with uh, Leandro Tokarevsky, who is a game designer. Um, he's going to tell us about a game called Rebels Unite. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Leandro? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Leandro Tokarevsky, uh, better known on the internet as Tok, since I have a very strange name. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm a game designer and illustrator for uh, the game Rebels Unite. Uh, so <laughs> Rebels Unite, you've got another game as well, I believe. Yes, yes, I'm also working on a trading card game called uh, Multiverse Cosmic Conquest, which will be released as a living card game in the uh, physical version and as an online trading card game as well. Okay, so you, you, uh, we want you to talk about Rebels Unite. We tried to play Rebels Unite, but we didn't play it with enough people. Um, so we felt that it wasn't really fair that uh, we tried to review <laughs> that game having not played it with enough people, so... We thought we'd give you the chance to talk about it yourself. So tell us about Rebels Unite, Leandro. Okay, so Rebels Unite is a game based on secret information. And uh, at the beginning of the game, nobody knows who anyone else is. It's a game played with many people. So you need at least, at least eight, and you can go up to 20 and maybe even more. I haven't tested with more than 20, though. <laughs> and there's only 20 cards in the... Uh, in the deck, so you would have to buy more than one to play with t- more than 20 people, but I digress. Anyway, um, each player is given a card with a character drawn on it, um, and they'll play as that character during the game. Uh, the main mechanic 
is uh, this meeting mechanic where you show a card, uh, you show your character card to uh, another player and they show their character card to you. So there's this exchange of information. But sometimes even when you know uh, what uh, that player's character is, you don't really know what that player's character is because there are two factions of the game. There's the rebels and then there's the government. And um, there are different characters in the game and the civilians can be both on the rebel side and the um, government side, depending on who they met with during the game. So there's this element of mystery and trying to figure out who met with whom um, bef uh, and in what order. And it gets confusing and complicated really fast, but it's not really complicated. It's just that uh, um, the rules are straightforward, uh, but uh, a lot of things happen and uh, um, it gets um, messed up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like the information, it, it stays hidden actually longer than uh, you may think. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the, the subtleties in the game is really just, it is trying to figure out who is who, really. Because um, the actual mechanics of the game are pretty simple, uh, like you describe. You're really just showing somebody your card and they show you yours. And it's actually, it's trying to keep track of who's seen what and, yeah, and um, do you know... Is that person a rebel leader, or are they working for the government, or whatever? You know, it's it, it's it gets it yeah, does get confusing, to... but it's kind of it's it's easy to play at the same time. Yeah, you're trying to remember uh, if that person met with this other person before they met with the third person. Yeah, uh, and what does that mean? <laughs> so <laughs> even though the rules are pretty straightforward, um, the game is more complex than it seems. So that's what I was uh, going for. The whole design of Rebels Unite was to create the simplest uh, to release game. So it's actually really small. It fits into your pocket easily. It's smaller than uh, a regular deck of cards. And um, the rules are pretty simple to learn, uh, but uh, it's a lot deeper than the, the rules suggest. So there's four characters, four different uh, types of characters. There's the rebel leaders, the civilians, the uh, police officers, and... Uh, the spies, and it's usually one spy, unless you're playing with a lot of char uh, a lot of players. Every character has a special ability, so the game is uh, turn-based, and each player can do one of two things during their turn. They can they can either uh, meet with another person, and I've already descri described how that works, or they can use that their character's special ability. And uh, to do that, they have to prove that they are indeed that uh, character. So they'll have to show their card to everybody. And uh, you don't want to reveal your identity to um, everybody. So that usually happens um, at the end of the game when you know that uh, a lot of the information is already out and you might as well use your ability. Uh, yeah, okay, so the civilian uh, can uh, switch their card with another person's card. And uh, when he, does, he or she does that, uh, they remain in the same faction. So if they were a civilian turned into a rebel uh, and they swap a card with uh, another civilian, let's say, they remain on the part of the rebels. Uh, if they turn into a police officer, then they uh, uh, become a, uh, allied with the government. The police officers are always allied with the government. Um, then uh, the ability of the police officer is uh, that they can... Um, arrest any person, removing them from the game. Um, the goal of the police officers is to arrest the two rebel leaders. So they can uh, meet with some players and try to figure out who the rebel leaders are beforehand. And um, once they have a pretty good idea on who the rebel leaders are, they'll have to show, show their um, badges, so to speak. They'll have to reveal that they're actually police officers and arrest the rebel leaders. But uh, if if they don't know exactly, they can uh, make a blunder and maybe arrest somebody that's innocent. Um, <laughs> then the rebel leader's ability is uh, to organize a revolution. And that ends the game. And during a revolution, every character which is allied with the rebels has to um, cry out, rebels unite! <laughs> and... Uh, the number of players allied with the rebels is counted, and compared to the total number of players still in the game, uh, the 
uh, arrested players aren't in the game. They are kind of like the dead people in Mafia, so to speak. They, they don't do much after they've been arrested. And if there's more uh, people allied with the rebels, then the rebels win. And if there's more people allied with the government, then the government wins. And then there's the spies ability, which I haven't revealed in my tutorial, and I won't reveal here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the spy is also a, a needed character to bring some imbalance into the whole system and some uncertainty. Yeah, the spy does do that. Okay, so I, I think we've covered pretty much the entirety of the rules. Maybe I, I've missed some points. There's a few uh, niche rules. I was going to actually yeah. ask you, um, what happens if a civilian swaps with a rebel leader and they're on the government side? Yeah, um, so if you become a rebel leader, you become allied with the rebels. The rebel leaders are always allied with the rebels okay. and the police officers are always allied with the government. That's how it works. Okay, okay. I thought that that could have been it could have created quite an interesting thing in the game, but I suppose it would also kind of make it a bit pointless. <laughs> yeah, it, as, I tried it with that uh, rule as well, but it uh, just created a lot of problems. So uh, we're keeping it uh, like this. So it, it does seem like it's, it seems like a really interesting game. Um, I'm actually looking forward to get, uh, playing it with a decent number of people this time. I think you said to us that you, it, even though it's uh, eight people minimum. Um, it's better if you play it with about 12 or so at least, is that right? Yes, 10 or 12 people, that's about uh, the right amount Yeah um, So yeah, I'm looking forward to giving that a go because uh, I'll, even though, like I say, we played it without as many people as we should have um, I actually still quite enjoyed what I saw and I could really see what you were going for in this game um, and it's got a lot of um, subtleties and confusion to it, that, uh, which is the kind of thing that I like in a party game So Yeah, and it's still pretty light Um at the end of the day, uh, a group of people wins and a group of people loses. Uh, there's an, actually a more competitive version. I say competitive, it's not really competitive. It's still pretty casual. But uh, if you want to have a single winner, there's a version of that game uh, as well where you play multiple games and in the end you come up with one winner. Okay. Uh, and there's also a slight, even an even more casual version for uh, groups of people that aren't gamers at all, maybe children or... Um, People that are um, just there for the fun. So even if it's a very small package, there's a few different variants uh, of Rebels Unite you can yeah. play. And it does come in a very small package. I was I was totally surprised by the size of this box. It is tiny. And like you say, <laughs> it does fit in your pocket, so you can easily take it to a party. Okay, Leandro, have you got any other games in the pipeline? Yes. Uh, so... I mainly focused on uh, this uh, trading card game that I mentioned, Multiverse Cosmic Conquest. Um, and uh, right now, you can actually play the game uh, on a virtual tabletop for free on Octagon, it's called. And I have um, a tutorial series on YouTube, uh, which explains how to play the game in very uh, digestible steps, much better than I could do here in this interview. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can play it for free and try it out um, and um, look forward for the final version um, online and uh, uh, the paper, paper version as well. And I'm also actually working as an illustrator for um, a video game called uh, Towards the Pantheon. I'm doing all the pixel art. Um, that's I'm not uh, a game designer for the game. I'm just doing illustration, but still uh, it's. Um, it's another game in the pi in the pipeline yeah. and should be out um, next summer, I think. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so another question to put you on the spot. Um, do you have any advice for anyone thinking of designing a game? Uh, well, yes. Uh, I guess my biggest advice is to st start small because, as with anything, uh, if you want to make a movie, you don't start with... Um, a big budget uh, trilogy. You yeah. start with maybe doing a small clip, learning how uh, how the camera works, how to edit, learning how to work with uh, actors. And it's the same thing with uh, any um, any activity, actually. And game design is one of it. And that, that's actually why I uh, designed this uh, game as it is. Um, because it's my first game, and it's uh, the goal was to make it small, compact, easily produced, 
Um, and uh, I knew that I could make the illustrations uh, for cards and I didn't need to um, have, um, I don't know, um, plastic pieces or big game boards yeah. that would have been more difficult to produce. And um, yeah, start small, start with um, a clear concept and uh, maybe I guess another uh, small advice would be um, uh, if you have a favorite game or just a game and you find a flaw in it, try to um, improve on that and maybe that can lead to some interesting ideas. That's something that I did with Rebels Unite to a certain extent uh, because uh, it started with the idea of uh, having secret information and um, a similar game would be Mafia or maybe Coup or Secret Message is also another one. Um, and uh, I have some problems with Mafia. <laughs> I just don't like that uh, there's one player who doesn't play. It, it, yeah. He has to narrate the whole thing. And I, I, I didn't like that uh, some players uh, don't get to do anything. They just are killed right away and they just watch the others. So I um, started to create a game that uh, didn't have these problems. At least they were problems from my point of view. Um, so if you have uh, um, a game that you like but you think could be better, maybe you can uh, try to improve it and it come up with a different game entirely. Well, Leandro, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. And like I say, <laughs> we look forward to playing Rebels Unite and we look forward to what you're going to do in the future. Thanks, man. That was Leandro Tokarevsky of Talk Arts Media. Uh, you can find his website at talkartsmedia.com. That's T O K A R T S media.com. So that's our uh, party game section done. And that's the end of the, the podcast. That is it. Well, not the end of the podcast, it's the end of the episode. Ah. Ah, we're not, we're not <laughs> the declaring anything. The, the well, podcast will continue. With this individual cast. Um, <laughs> So we're not entirely sure what's going to happen after the new year. We're hoping that we'll be able to stick to the schedule, but uh, if not, then we won't be too far behind. It we might be a week late or something like that. It just all depends on how Christmas and New Year goes for us. Well, uh, we should be back um, within reasonable time after Christmas, I, I, I'd hope. I uh, think so, but I, I think our next episode would have been due out in the first week of January. Um, so we'll see how we get on with that. Bye. But I, like we said in the last episode, we're actually going to be changing the day that we release the podcasts because there's so much stuff going on at the beginning of the week for us now that we can't really commit to doing it anymore. So No doubt, no doubt uh, it'll just change next year. Oh, probably I. just be in the way of that. I mean, you're going to have to be flexible with us, eh? Yeah, Come on. just I. Give just us a, a bit of flexibility, flex. that's all we ask. Uh, so what we're looking at now is for podcast episodes to go out on Saturday instead of Wednesdays because right. it's a lot easier for us to record and edit at the end of the week than it is for us to do at the start of the week now. Just be ready for your weekend jog. Yeah. Whatever it is you do. <laughs> whatever, whatever weekend uh, stuff you get up to. Drive out to Linda's farm. Can you drive out there? No, nah, I but only at certain times. All right. Is doesn't it stop these, people... Like, is drown- it a tidal route? doesn't stop people drowning their Mercedes in the... Uh, yeah in the North Sea. Right, this has gone a bit Alan Partridge, so let's uh, <laughs> let's move on to your internets now. So if you want to email us, uh, that's firstplayertoken at gmail.com, that's F-I-R-S-T player token. Um, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, but that's at 1ST player token. Um, you, come on, do your bit. Oh, once player token. I mean, you enjoyed doing it so much before and now all of a ah, sudden it's become a I was chore. just a bit gassy there and I was like... <laughs> I couldn't really concentrate on anything else, but I once player token, I'll get yep. my catchphrase out there. At 1ST player token. Uh, all our episodes are up on SoundCloud, but you can also find us on iTunes, so subscribe to us on iTunes on your uh, podcasting thingamajig. Um, we have a YouTube channel, which is where I put my 12-minute edit of my, my summer car stream, where I fail to just get to the shop, but it's worth a watch, even if I do say so myself, because it's quite fun. <laughs> Um, and my Twitch username is Unnecessary Chris if you want to watch me actually streaming games. Um, and we are part of the Podnos Network. The um, UK's leading entertainment podcast network. Yep. Uh, uh, continuing to grow and develop new podcasts, and there's there's a whole range of them out there, so get them checked out and listen to us on there if you if you like yes. to stream from, from the web. 
That's another place um, you can listen to us. And you can download from there. There's a lovely wee directory. And, and you can also like and comment on our episodes on there now. So, yeah. uh, you know, give... New features. Yes. <laughs> New features. All sorts of fun stuff on there. So get involved and uh, support UK independent podcasting like ourselves. Thank you, Ewan. Um, we also have a website, um, but yet again... <laughs> Yeah, again, I've still not got around to actually fixing it. Sorry, right, though. So, one day. I'm hoping to do that in that week between Christmas and New Year where I'm going to be sitting twiddling my thumbs. So, I'll hopefully get that sorted. And that's www.firstplayertoken.com. And we also have a Discord. Uh, if you want the link to that, just ask us and we'll give it to you. You can ask us on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Nah. Uh, we will get back to one you. One of on the that. many other social network- networking yeah, yeah. platforms. You, 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 you can anywhere. access. access our access to another... Where are you going with this, I've, I've just completely lost my thread there. <laughs> you, can, right. you can contact us on one social networking platform to get to get access to us on another one. Yeah. Right, good. Thanks. Just so I've got my head around that. Okay, okay. right. I'm glad, I'm glad you got your head around that. Right. I'll send you a message tonight. Thanks. Uh, so that's episode 34. Yeah. Done. Um, we will see you after the new year, or you'll hear us after the new year, whatever... Yeah whatever way you want to look at it. Another year seen out by the large and unnecessary First Player Token podcast. Oh yeah, this is our second new year, isn't it? It is, oh, yeah. Wait, we're doing not bad. We already had one Christmas disruption. We've got at least two listeners now, so... <laughs> hey, we're doing quite well. It's nice to know. At least two, I said. At the very least. <laughs> two very loyal listeners. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening. Um, see you after the new year. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.